versus OG, where our panel had some not so nice things to say about OG's lineup. They called it garbage. They called it trash. They called it refuse. Non recyclable goods. Keep going. I'm, I'm out. Yeah, that was it. That was kind of weak for an NA player. You should know all your trash <laughs> synonyms by now. Right? I'm sorry. I'm no Quinn. Yeah, if you played one game with Quinn, you should have the built in story. <laughs> he's, he's got abomination. An abomination against man. <laughs> Uh, Do you agree? Look, that doesn't look that bad. I think BGM yeah. just has to pop off. If he pops okay. off, I think they can make it come together. Now, how likely is that to happen? I'm not sure. Especially in the Schofield Knicks. This is one of the few guys who's still going to play this hero. First Blood might help if you can get it. Yeah, they got it last time, and they're trying to get it this time, except for the fact that there was a couple of problems with that, actually. Mago and Schofield. Schofield hit the two-man stun, and Mago separated them with Ice Shards. Okay, that's a that's a rough way to start. Is uh, yeah. you want BZM to go ham this game? I think so. You have the damage on all the disables that OG are presenting. Getting first blood to Dark Mogul is going to make that a bit harder. <laughs> three bounty runes though. An uphill battle. Yeah, three bounties. We're so now he's only two hundred gold behind. Easy, easy clap. This is a pretty slow damage ramp for OG. I think that's the issue that the panel was having with their draft. Is that the the rate at which their damage comes online in the early fights can feel a little slow here. Between Shadow Demon and Rubik, you kind of need your ults before you're threatening anybody. Dragon Knight's a pretty low damage hero. And then you're kind of dealing with this Naga who wants to go like second or third item before she joins an engagement. Yeah. Kind of a lot to wait for, right? That doesn't necessarily mean they're out of the picture, though, as you can often play defensive with these types of lineups and bait over extensions on the skirmishes, bring numbers to the fight, play around your one high damage here, which in this case is Storm Spirit, who can present a threat on the map. And it is a greedy support duo from Beast Coast. Like, Nyx Phoenix is... I'd put it up there as pretty greedy. I mean, everything... I mean, greed is always relative, but... You ideally want a lot of levels on these supports as well. Is Taiga dead? Yeah. They're gonna met. Oh, never mind. He had a lot of wand charges there. DM will take a lot of damage on his way out, but they will both get away from this meta in time. The uh, I, I find it particularly surprising that OG went for this kind of strategy after they got hard run over in game one. Why? Well, they don't you just think that Beast Coast is likely to pull the same shenanigans on them? You mean the Terrorblade? I mean, just in general, ending the game or securing a serious advantage by 20 minutes. Yeah, but that's why they have Naga. Naga, the ultimate game staller, the ultimate puts you to sleep and I'll see you in 30 minutes. Set your snooze button, Cap. Yeah, but they have heroes to deal with that split push. Don't they? Kind of. I mean, their catch is only Nyx. I guess Tusk when it comes on later, but I'd argue Tusk is not... You can have issues catching Naga on the map. I think it's going to be more about the group up from Beast Coast. But I don't think the map is necessarily going to be an issue for OG. I feel like it's the five on five. If you get Auras on Sacred, you have a Phoenix Egg, you go in the pit with the tag team plus Metamorph. Are you contesting that Roshan? Are you contesting those five on fives? And how do you get on top of this Terrible Blade and burst him? That's where you want BKBs on the Dragon Knight and the Storm to be able to commit in and not give a Thunder. Ooh, who's going to die first here? The dive goes out. Another Fire Spirit. Taiga doesn't actually die to that, and he has four stick charges. But simultaneously, Stinger didn't want to stick around for Shadow Poison number four. Got him on the way back. Got him on the way back, though. And he gets the double spawn here off the D-Ward for the small camp. So Stinger's having another pretty good early game here on his five, setting Hector up for success, shutting down Taiga, who one might argue is the most important player for this OG lineup in a lot of their games. Like, if he has a good or bad game, it feels like that dictates where the pace of that whole entire game goes. Yeah. You know, I do kind of feel like this uh, duo of Taiga DM don't win their lanes nearly as much as uh, the Taiga Amar duo did. I'm not blaming DM for that. I'm just wondering if it's like a difference in heroes or something. It sounded like you were blaming him, but... I mean, it is a difference in heroes. Like, yeah. Amar is an anti-carry player. He plays right. heroes to shut down the enemy carry and win the CS battle in a one-on-one -on -one type of matchup. Like, these Razor Vipers, they're just going to destroy you. I also think that was one of Amar's strengths. His, his lane was very, very solid.
He knew how to abuse the heroes that he played and abuse them really well. DM is more of just a, you know, renaissance offlaner, if you will. Like okay. He's, he's pretty good at almost anything in the game if you put him in there. And that flexibility is what OG were looking for. But it doesn't necessarily mean he's going to go to lane and dominate the enemy carry. Is he dead? The telekinesis throwback. A fire fire goes off. And, well, there is another ice shard coming up. But BZM has already bottled up enough. Tygon will hit the disruption. BZM... He is going to go for it. I was wondering if he felt a little bit too skittish about putting some damage on Schofield. Ultimately, it wasn't enough either way. You got to respect the Schofield bait, especially on Nyx. This is a hero where when you bait it out, he can turn around with the stuns. He has fairy yeah. fire, he has stick, he has raindrop. A lot of deceptive tank ability, and he's going back in round two. Hits Light. him again. Did not get the spike carapace on the spirit. But they get the kill anyway. Uh, this hero, another hero of Schofields that they ran, they actually were running at the Lima Major, uh, didn't have nearly the same success. I believe they ran it three times, had two losses with it. So, I still believe in Nick's Assassin. I don't know what Hector's laughing about, but I still believe <laughs> in Nick's Assassin. This hero's good. His, his lane's a little rough, but if you can make some early moves like this, if you have an independent offlaner, that helps them a lot which he has here versus the Naga lane. Just no pressure going on the Shrac. You're really going for this one. The Fire Spirits is going to slow down the damage a lot. They're entirely reliant on the Shadow Poison. If they can get the fifth stack, maybe? Can't pop it, though, if you're dead. Yep, it's just going to have to naturally take out and DM. I mean, do they even... This is not enough. It's not enough. Oh, my God, it was almost enough, and the Breathe Fire will do the final bit of damage. He went down to, like, 20 health there, so... But it wasn't enough. Let's it was, We it. were right. Yeah. We were right. Final Jeopardy will go to us. Mm -hmm. And still, they can't punish the Slashrac. This is part of the problem right now. They're getting away with this Nyx because the Nogalane is unable to create aggression on this offlane range hero. Which means Schofield is free up to gank mid, as we saw earlier. Harass BZM on the runes. Be his obnoxious self. God, Schofield's so annoying. He's the best. I mean, it's like I said, man, I get PTSD watching this guy play. <laughs> I do feel like uh, Sacred not being punished is pretty important because his game is particularly important, right? God, he's he got a Courier too. <laughs> yeah, of course he did. He, he's got a, a lane matchup against the Naga Siren, but in general, Leshrac versus Naga, as we heard PSJ eloquently rant about, not a good matchup for the Naga. No. It's going to scale really well in this game. And the auras are going to make the Storm and DK jumps that much harder as well. Dark Mongo will rotate bottom for a fourth death on Taiga Shadow Demon at the seven minute mark. He has not found any momentum in this game. And Shadow Demon is a hero where when you fall behind on those levels, when you have a rough early game, it can be hard to catch back up because you fall behind in the damage. And then you kind of just have to stack, maybe clear some stacks, play really greedy. That's how you come back on the hero. The downside is when you're doing that, you're not helping your cores accelerate on the map. So I feel like this does put BZM on an island here. Where he's just going to have to make some plays for himself, get some runes for himself, make the OG magic happen. I will say that his later strength is more dependent on his matchup, right? I mean, he, a lot of his damage is going to come from disruption on Terrorblade and using those illusions. So at least sure. he's got that going for him. I feel like that argument only goes to a certain point, though, you know? It's like, hey guys, the Terror Blade's 20,000 net worth ahead of me. That means I'm crazy good. <laughs> I can disrupt him and kill everybody. It's like, yeah, but he's 20,000 net worth ahead of you. Mako experienced a little bit of disruption on his attempted gank. Rotated the bottom lane again. Oh, if he gets away from this one, nope. that raindrop almost came back up. It was a close call, but he does fall. So that's the type of baiting in an engagement I was talking about, where when you have low damage drafts, you can play the defensive fight and get uh -huh. the return kills, that makes it easier for the OG. I mean, they barely got that one, but they still get a big core kill off of the Storm counterplay. Taiga. The finger has been really aggressive with this Phoenix. And he's just punishing the hell out of Taiga. Level five. Two, zero, and three. And Phoenix he's doing is a, a monster. Job. So they're getting a decent advantage out of this landing phase. They just got to be careful not to repeat... Uh, that bit of overextension aggression that Dark Mago showed in that bottom lane. 
dive here in the top. He'll get the kill on Chu. Clear out the heroes out of this top lane and start taking the tower. Sacred, of course, doesn't have by Diabolic Edict yet. You don't really go at this early, but uh, you can still pressure the tower by killing the creeps, cutting them. And Stinger scouting the Shadow Demon stack. So this is the way Tiger can get his levels back in this game, but not if it gets stolen from the super high level Phoenix in this game. Bring it Dark Vago. Uh, Tiger just stacked for him. This is two games in a row now that Beast Coast have played for stealing stacks. BCM goes for the punish. Snowball goes out. And he's going to come back from that disruption into a round of nukes. And DM is here as well. So right. there's definitely no way out of it. And they got most of that stack. So yeah. really good read from Taiga to make sure he's getting something out of this early game. Contributing to BCM's game flow. Big pickup for the Storm. Another bounty rune to refill his bottle. He's yeah. just gaining a little momentum. Part of the reason they're able to do that, though, there are no heroes in the top half of the map. That is from correct. OG. They are literally all in this. Like, there is just the Shadow Demon here, and then they're all in the Radiant Jungle heading towards bottom in that area. Disruption mid, but this is just to secure the rune. Tiger will lay down his life. Oh, he actually has an early supernova here, and OG can't actually kill it. So that haste rune, a bit wasted for BCM. And Hector's here. Yeah, Hector cuts across once again, playing a little active on the Terror Blade. He's not just defaulting jungle, he's trying to hold on to his lane, and he's participating in hero kills. This game feels like another game where OG are playing as if they have a lot of pressure on them. You're like forcing these awkward moves. It's not super synced up. You're kind of making aggressive plays for small things. Okay, Tiger sacrifices himself to get a rune, but then you insta pop through and you don't get anything off it. It just feels very off for them. I don't know if it's a, a lineup thing or they're not sure where people should be playing, but it's definitely not synced up right now. And these schools are going to punish you with these Terrorblade drafts because Terrorblade is one of the best heroes of just soaking up a free early game into space, into hitting his timings faster and punishing you with the metas as we saw in game one. So you don't have a huge amount of time to figure it out. You, I mean, you can rely on Naga to stall some of this game as Yuragi is having a much better time this round than he did last time. But as you say, they have some counters as Naga. They have Phoenix with the magic damage. They have Lashrak who's going to scale pretty nicely. Maybe you find him with Nyx at some point. Still got to build more momentum off Storm as much as you can into the Storm Spirit. We will get a synchronized move from OG. Three-man smoke with ults up. Looking for the track top. They should get it. Yeah, he is definitely going to be caught here. Unless he goes up and TPs out. But no, he, he wanted to try and put pressure on the tower and shows himself for a beat. Gets caught. So... Continuing to get BCM kills. OG, they've won one game, uh, one series, excuse me, in this uh, group stage number two, and that was up against Shopify Rebellion, and the way they did it was the BCM show. Got to get the BCM show back in town. That's how it feels like to me this game. Just play around him. He's playing the best. I feel like OG have the best identity in terms of what he wants every game and what they want to do with it. So that gives you an anchor point in these lineups where you can say, okay, Let's listen to this guy's calls. Let's see what he wants to do. Just keep snowballing off that. Let the other cores play independently. That's what I would be advising them. It's going to open up some space bottom for DM to hit the towers as mid clash hits. I don't know if this is where Yuragi wanted to be. Oh, look at that. The pump fake from Sacred. Nice save. Beautiful stuff. He actually started going for the split earth and the mirror image would have allowed him to dodge it. So we, he re-upped it. Hits the stun. Gets the kill on the Naga Sire. Now they're going to snowball forward to catch Taiga as well. Easy stuff for Beast Coast. It's another fight. They just bring everybody. Hector's going to join to convert on this objective. And Schofield finds Chew in the back and another easy double damage kill for Dark Mago off of that rune that Schofield secured against Naga illusions earlier. All the little things paying dividends here for Beast Coast as they continue their rampage in this series. This is just an awkward space for Yoraki to be in. Not respecting the amount of jump that they have, and Beast Coast bringing the pain. Got a whole lot of pain, fire burning, and OG. I mean, they lose this series, things start looking a little dicey for them because they're one and two right now. They'd be one and three. 
not a great place to be when uh, your bottom four are going to get kicked out. Dragon Tail stun. Very important kill if they can get it. Dark Mago, short snowball, trying to dodge whatever damage you can. Not good enough. Schofield tries to go for the TP out. That is also denied. Taiga stops it with a disruption. And a purge finally finishes him up. Dust not really needed. Finally, a good move. Uh, we get some good jumps using both their cores, combining them. They have the damage from the supports. Level 4 shards stolen for Chu. That's a lot of extra early burst damage coming through on these jumps. And now... That Naga can go to work on the map while your pickoff is finding some heroes. This is what OG wants the game to look like. Yoragi getting farm, pushing lanes in, dealing with some of the Hector split push map pressures. He is ahead. His illusions are going to be a threat of their own. But your pickoff is pretty strong, and Beast Coast don't necessarily have the ability to stop you just running around and jumping a hero with your chain initiation here. Like, there's no big save, there's no big counterplay, at least in this early game. Just jump somebody with Storm, pull them into a Remnant. You can even jump away and then hit them with all the. The Fade Bolt, the Shard, the Purge. It's a pretty low committal go. Who wins in the uh, Illusion push war? The the, the uh, proxy war, I guess, that is going on in these side lanes between Terrorblade and Naga? Mm. Probably Naga. I think Naga is the strongest map control hero outside of that Furion eggs. Mm-hmm. So I would give I would give the edge to Naga's Iron. And then Terrorblade just gives you more like direct pushing power. Yeah, objective taking earlier Roshan or building taking if he wants to join those fights. Like Naga is not really gonna join fights super early to convert on tier ones or Roshan. Does it a bit later. Second or third item you can start joining those fights, be a bit tankier. But even then your job in the fight is not necessarily to be the damage dealer, it's just to create space with illusions, force people into awkward positions, maybe land a good song or net, and you want the damage to come from your other two cores. So OG are honestly not in that bad of a position as much as we were talking. All three of their cores are finding the farm. Yeah, if they can they get to the second or third items here for the damage, then the split, the split push with the Naga that can feed into those pickoffs is going to become an issue for Peace Coast unless Schofield can continue scouting and finding some room of his own. Getting a lot of damage on this tier 2 bottom. They're going to rotate to try and stop it. Hector, he's going to show like first. Taiga goes thing. for the disruption. Quick Manta actually disrupts things and they blow up the Dragonite so quickly. Mid lane looks like they're going to catch the Leshrac, but Beast Coast are going to get two here in this bottom lane. So one for two exchange, but I don't think OG hate that. No, because BZM is getting the big core kill mid. He's going to push him up to level 12 here off of that Witchblade finish. That was almost like a suicide push from DM. He's like, all right, I know I'm going to die down here, but whatever. We're sure. going to get more farm out of the map. I'm going to come back in 20 seconds anyway. I mean, they got a lot of big spells with long cooldowns out of them. Yuragi was cutting both mid and bottom because he was playing inside of the Radiant Triangle, so he threw his illusions into both lanes. I mean, there was a lot of good things for OG there that I think make up for that second kill that Beast Coast got. This is prime Naga position, the prime real estate, you know. You, you're used to that. You live in L.A. It's got beachfront property right now. When you can cut both those lanes from Triangle, that's where you want to be. Now he gets to TP back and five-man fight for OG. Looking for Hector. They're going to burst him. Oh, did he impale? It might have just saved him. Can he get out the Sunder? No. Good thing that Chu was outside of that area. Gets the telekinesis to keep that chain disabled. Now the Nyx is asked to do this problem. No, it's going to be the yeah. Sorcerer who dies instead. Oh dear, BZM. That carapace in the nick of time from Schofield. He continues. Oh, to punish. they're going to catch Yoragi too. Underneath the tier two, this is a pretty dangerous proposition. Never mind. What are you doing there, son? Did not get back fast enough. Think he wanted to throw illusions down that lane before Beast Coast could get a push going. And that's all that observer ward on the lane. He's pinging it out now. Yeah. It's an unconventional ward to have out there. It's going to time out soon, too. That's a huge payoff for Beast Ghost. Fighting into their vision. Always a good recipe. You're going to sacrifice the Terrorblade. I think Hector's okay with that one. You know, he's, he's like, all right, we won the team fight. I'll, I'll contribute a little bit. Throw my life on the line every once in a while. He's up really far. I mean, his team is a distant memory at this point. But Schofield's just causing a lot of problems here. Multiple stuns, making BZM's life hard. He zips BZM. Hits that spike carapace and... Split Earth would have hit him anyway, actually. Yeah. 
You gotta be careful about how deep he goes in the fight. Don't have any saves for the Storm Spirit outside of Disruption. So it's also an issue of how far Taiga can get in and whether Taiga's starting on the Terrible with Disruption or not. Do you want to have that save for the Storm to bail him out? Do you want to play more aggressive and try and use Hector's Strength against him? It's a double-edged sword right now for Shadow Demon. Tag Team plus meta. Able to do Roshan very easily as a result. It's just Terrorblade being ahead of Naga right now. Reaping the benefits. All Yuragi can do is get into an aggressive map state and try and cut and push lanes to force Beast Coast back. Split them up and find the opportunity for a pickoff on his other cores. Hector is a generous man. He'll allow Mago to pick up the... Uh the Aegis, which means that Beast Coast can be hyper-aggressive when it comes to starting fights. That's very generous. Are we sure this is K1? This could be K2. Second iteration. The advanced model. Joins fights, hits heroes, helps his team. It's perfect. The perfect player. Caught him. They do get the mid tower for their efforts. BCM snags the last hit on that one, which gets him closer and closer to his BKB, which he desperately needs against this Nyx assassin. No, never mind. It's definitely K1. He was stealing little trolls and skeletons from Sacred on a big camp. So <laughs> it's definitely K1 here, not K2. <laughs> you, might, you might not like it, but this is what yeah. peak terror made performance looks like. He remembers the old ways. <laughs> Sacred's like, bro, I have Pulse Nova. Just let me clear the camps. No. Those are mine. Haven't you seen? I'm the second highest <laughs> net worth per minute carry in this game, in this tournament. Got to keep that going. That's Scotty finished at 21. Oh my word. This is a farm terror blade. Very far. Look at that. 2-2-2 two, 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 faster. Ooh, the K2 program. Related to the Zhao 9 program, of course. Mm, yes, yeah, that is a deep cut of uh, SVG lore, if you guys uh, don't know. Speaking of lore, did you know Nyx Assassin is actually just an assassin of the Nyx goddess herself, born yes. out of a, a glob egg? that she sends against her enemies. And do you know who the famous enemy of the Nyx goddess is? That I do not know. Abaddon. Is that she real? He hates Abaddon more than any other hero in Dota and it has sent countless assassins against him. But of course he cannot die. <laughs> Therefore the assassins have all been thwarted. I see, I see. Is that why they took away the break mechanic away from his, uh, his yep. hit? Yeah. Because it was against the war? Exactly. Because that would actually allow you to You're kill. lucky I'm here educating you. Wow. You wouldn't understand any of these <laughs> nuanced factors of Dota 2 right now. Yes, because, of course, Dota 2 balancing follows the lore and not uh, the actually, other Actually, a around. lot of it does. You think about items in Dota, a lot of the items, they make heroes to match the items, you know? You think that's how they came up with Pango? Yeah, they needed a hero that uses Diffusal Blade? They is thought, that what you're saying? You know, let's make a hero that is the most annoying possible, that uses every obnoxious support killing item in the game, and roll it all up into one giant ball of garbage. <laughs> That's Pangolier. Roll it up. If you can't tell, I really hate that hero. <laughs> you know, it's one of my most played. I know. <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> it's Beast Coast. We'll go high ground. Schofield's just going back for something, looking for Yules before joining this fight, but Beast Coast do not care if their Nyx is not uh, here. Trying to go for the DM hero is pretty bold inside, like under a tier three tower aura. Yeah, that was uh He's gonna have a lot of that armor. Tough. That was very tough. I almost wonder if Mago just was saying like, I'm gonna jump any hero that shows, and then it just happened to be a Dragonite. That'll allow BZM to finish BKB. Very nice. And you also are closing in on Heart for Yuragi after Orchid. So he has some kill threat as well as tank ability coming out here. This but is probably the next window where OG are going to look to take that fight with the Aegis expiring. Wear through these heroes. You're probably not going to focus the Terrorblade, but if you can get everybody else. The issue is you do have big auras up for Peace Coast. You have Greaves for Staker that he got earlier, and you have Pipe finished for Stinger, a product of the amazing game this Phoenix has had. That's when you have... 
the one-to-one -one matchup advantage, Lashrak versus Naga Siren, do you think that Sacred is correct in going the the normal offlane build and Guardian Greaves and stuff, or do you think he should have gone for like a Bloodstone carry type Leshrac? I think Greaves is fine. I mean, you can go Greaves into carry items too. We sure. seen that before. I think Greaves is good versus Naga. Like Greaves is an amazing anti Naga game because you purge net, you kite her out, you give armor to a lot of your low heroes that she's trying to poke down with Riptide. Okay. So I have nothing against Greaves in this matchup either. It's just going to be good for the team with the early mana refill for Nyx and Tusk as well in the fights. It's just now it's a question of, okay, how much more utility do you go for versus how much extra scale do you think you're going to need in this game? Because the high ground is proving difficult. So you're going to keep trying to catch on the map, and they will catch a Dragon Knight. Sir Davian. Oh, they're going to try to turn. He's yeah, I'm thinking about it a little bit. Does, of course, have his BKB that he can fall back on. Yule Scepter helps out Schofield zip away from BZM. They TP out, so they get the DK kill. Now, no BKB on the Storm Spirit. They get a plus one. The Rubik dies as well. Two falls. An opportunity presents itself, perhaps, for another objective. I mean, at least it's tier two. Hector's here. Hector doesn't show up if you're not killing something. It might be you if there's nothing else. <laughs> <laughs> so if you call him to a fight and there's nothing to kill, you're saying he's going to kill you? Yeah, that's the face of a man who's not afraid to deal with his own teammates. That's all I'm saying. BZM's going to do a little bit of zipping back and forth, but his BKB is on cooldown, so Beast Coast, nicely timed push. There is going to be this obnoxious Naga Siren constantly split pushing them. Tyga shows for a second, and oh. Dark Mago is instantly on top of him. Now, they are pretty grouped up. This is kind of awkward. BCM's going to get a decent amount of damage on his zips in, but DK is not going to get any damage because he dies. Hector pops BKB looking for the Sunder. Can't it's quite get range. it. He's going to have to use it on an ally. Use it on Schofield. The song Ooh, is going to be him. able to catch them. This is OG's opportunity to turn the game around. They have a stun after it. No, oh, but they do have a silence. Oh, what a stun from Schofield. They're turned around and instantly BZM is dead. And OG, they collapse under the weight of Beast Coast. Schofield, you god. That was disgusting. Stolen info from Chew bottom a little time. Just but. a little bit. Tiger's trying to buy a little bit more time, but he will eventually die. How the now, Yoragi's caught in here as well. Telekinesis throwback, but the Split Earth holds him in place. Stolen the M comes Earth. forward with the Dragon That's Tail. A lot of damage. And that is Hector taking out the Fireball. The 40 30. 30. Not good enough. That's why you buy Greaves. But OG holds. Sure, it took a lot out of them. That the, took a lot. Their economy is in shambles yeah, that right was now. That a 7k swing off that fight, and that's not even including Raxes, which didn't go down. That's just buybacks destroying you right now. Will they get Schofield? Or will they? It's going to have a Carapace. Everybody's done. Everybody take a pause. He's been so annoying for BZM in these fights. Yeah. BZM was trying to wait out his initiations too for that BKB to come back up, and that's why. Those impales, that Carapace? Mm hmm. Absolutely deadly. Chu's gotten some good spell steals. It's the one thing going for OG. He got a stolen impale, put it on two or three. Got this split earth back. <laughs> <laughs> Is that the real life guy or what? Pretty much. Witness me. <laughs> Stinger's having a good time. Level 14 Phoenix with a pipe. Yeah, he's having a hell wow. of a game. They don't really have the best egg hitters either. No. Nope. It doesn't even feel like they've been close to contesting these in the engagement. Not to mention, you can just sunray pipe whoever BZM jumps and he's going to have to reset. So the first go for OG is not a kill. Has to be the second or third time around. Oh, where are you going, DM? You going to do a little uh, little split pushing? Does that blink here? Little Throw a little fireball action out there? Not going to happen. Schofield saw the whole damn thing. The goddess Nyx is being appeased in this game. Uh, by the way, yeah, I was going to point that out. Yeah, two fluffy hats. It's about where Nyx rates, I think. Two out of four fluffy hats on the scale, yeah. Mm. You know, we don't see this hero a lot. That said, fluffy hats are really good on this hero. Yeah, I mean, he, he, the hero's... Weirdly, his, like, best spell is Spike Carapace, right? Why is that weird? I mean, I think 
classically, when you think of Nyx Assassin, you think of his Mana Burn or his Vendetta Impale. But really, just him existing longer in fights and getting multiple Spike Carapace. I don't know. I feel like if we learned anything yesterday, it's that Porcupines are Imba, and what's more Imba than a Quill Attack from a mm. Beetle? I feel like that falls in that category. I like how every single time, uh, if there's no heroes around, he will impale the illusions, the disruption of- Oh, the Eel Scepter! It's gonna force the BKB. Yeah, PCM forced to use that BKB, and once again, there's the heals you were talking about. He's trying to go on the Nyx Assassin, Let's but do can't do all. enough damage. Now you don't have Storm BKB for this team fight. You just can't even go in here if you're BZM. Rocky has a full Bloodthorn. Uh, you're gonna have to use Naga. You're gonna have to use her now. Trying to wear out this meta timing, it's running out in three. Okay, that's interesting. Me melee Terra Blade, and they've caught the Phoenix. What a stun. Oh, the Snowball save! He's gonna be able to get off the Supernova as a oh, result. It's oh, gee, they couldn't even kill the one support that they tried to initiate on. BKB Snowball save guaranteed in this game. It's just too many targets to focus. Impale lands oh, on Yoragi. Nicely played. Schofield gets glimmer. another one. They do get a glimmer out. Yoragi playing away, but the rest of his team is exposed. And he just cannot do the damage without them. Once again, Spike Carapace catches DM's fireball, allows him to hit a follow-up stun, and that's the game. One a last clean, no field tip for the road. Lean 2-0 for e Beast Ghost. That was just a very one-sided series. Absolute stop overall. Beast Ghost. They were on the same page today, and it was, we're going to run at you with some good old Terrorblade lineups. I would not be giving this team second phase terribly. I'm not sure what's scarier in general, but it seems like they have a very good idea of how to play around this hero when Hector's on it. They just run at you, they take early objectives, they take early buildings. He's very comfortable with dealing with the map so the rest of his team can group up and play this kill style. I just felt like OG were unready for this series today. Maybe trying to figure some own stuff out for themselves in terms of how they want to play and what works for them. So, you know, I'm not going to fault them. That can always be the case, but... They definitely got to start to reset and find some some growth or momentum in this tournament because they are not on an upward trajectory right now. There's no other way to put it. Yeah, with a score of one and three, they they kind of need to like win out the rest of their series. Meanwhile, Beast Coast have gotten themselves back into a uh, two-two position. So tied up with Shopify and Tundra after this, nicely done. Beast Coast take this.